When you make movies, there are two questions that you always get asked. One is, what's your favorite movie? And the other one is, who's your favorite filmmaker? When I get asked these questions, I hate to say it, but most of the time, I lie. I say something like, Star Wars is my favorite movie, and my favorite filmmaker is Edgar Wright. I pick something safe, something that's generally well known. And I do this because when I've given my real answers, uh, nobody really outside of filmmakers or cinephiles knows who or what I'm talking about. And so whoever I'm talking to will just kind of smile and nod and say, okay, that's cool, uh, I'll check it out later. And because this is kind of so obscure for most people, um, I know they're never gonna look it up. And I know if they do, they're gonna see it with no context and they're gonna be like, what's wrong with Jordan? So rather than do that, what I wanted to do was make a video response to those two questions. That way, if someone asks me who my favorite filmmaker is or what's my favorite movie, I can point them towards this video where they can learn a little bit about the filmmaker, a little bit about uh, my tastes in movies, and it's all in one place in an easy to watch video. So today, I'm talking about why my favorite filmmaker is my why my favorite film is her movie. So Maya Deren was a filmmaker working in the 1940s and 50s. She was a prominent filmmaker in avant-garde cinema. She was also a dancer, a choreographer, a poet, a lecturer, a writer, a photographer, among many other things. She was an independent artist who never worked in Hollywood and made her films for incredibly cheap. She believed that the primary function of film was to create an experience that was unique to cinema. She saw that the art form had been in a state of stagnation because of the over-reliance on other mediums and art forms. She wrote, What has been responsible for the lack of development of the cinematic idiom is the emphatic literacy of our age. So accustomed are we to thinking in terms of continuity logic of the literary narrative that the narrative pattern has come to completely dominate cinematic expression in spite of the fact that it is basically a visual form. We overlook the fact that painting, for instance, is organized in visual logics, or that music is organized in tonal rhythm logics, that there are visual and auditory experiences which have nothing to do with the descriptive narrative. So what she is basically saying is that back in her age, movies had become film plays. They followed the rules of literature and they didn't really take in full advantage of what movies could be. She made the comparison once that radio wasn't just a loud voice and an airplane wasn't just a faster car. And in that same way, the motion picture shouldn't be thought of as a faster painting or a more real play. If cinema is to take its place beside the others as a full-fledged art form, it must cease to merely record realities that owe nothing of their actual existence to the film instrument. Instead, it must create a total experience, so much out of the very nature of the instrument as to be inseparable from its means. It must relinquish the narrative disciplines that it has borrowed from literature and its timid imitation of casual logic of narrative plots, a form which flowered as a celebration of the earthbound step-by-step -step concept of time, space, and relationship, which was part of the primitive materialism of the 19th century. Instead, it must develop the vocabulary of filmic images and evolve the syntax of filmic techniques which relate those. It must determine the disciplines inherent in the medium and discover its own structural modes, explore the new realms and dimensions accessible to it, and so enrich our culture artistically as science has done in its own province. So think about how we talk about movies. Think about the movies that are being made by Hollywood. Popular cinema has become an art form that is driven by storytelling first and foremost. And by storytelling in this context, I mean films which reflect a traditional three-act structure with the B story, with setups, with payoffs, inciting incidents, all that kind of stuff packaged neatly with a pretty little bow on top. Meanwhile, the artistry of filmmaking is often neglected in favor of preserving the formula of traditional screenwriting. Think about Pixar, one of the most successful film studios out there, and their motto, story is king. And by looking at the films they produce and the critical reception and audience reception, it would appear that most folks agree with the statement that story is king. In my opinion, I agree with Maya Deren completely. It was true in her age, and I think it's true today, that this over-reliance on story has shifted our focus from 
cinema to storytelling, and it's been a detriment to the art form. It seems these days that a film is only as good as its screenplay, but films are way more than just a script. A script is just literature, that's not the movie itself. They have a unique language and vocabulary that has yet to been fully fleshed out. And what I really, really love about Maya Deren is her work reflects this pursuit of the cinematic language. She used editing techniques to push the boundaries of the medium to express very specific ideas and concepts. Her movies manipulated time and space in a really radical way. Her most uh, noteworthy example of this is her film Ritual in Transfigured Time. And just all of her movies, just in general, they're, they're awesome. Her films are all available to see online for free. Check them out. Uh, the most famous one is Meshes of the Afternoon. I think most film school students have probably seen that movie at some point in their studies. But I wanted to highlight my favorite film of hers and my all-time favorite film, which is her movie Atland. Atland was made in 1944, it's about 15 minutes long, and it follows a woman played by Maya Deren who washes up on a beach and goes on a strange journey in which she encounters different versions of herself, different people, and situations. She's compared this film to an inverted version of The Odyssey, and in some old program notes for screens of her films, uh, she wrote this about Atland. The direction of this film is towards the elimination of literary dramatic lines and literal symbolic meanings in order to discover, instead, a purely cinematic coherence and integrity. Through dislocations of space and time, it creates a relativistic universe in which the individual alone is a continuous identity. If one may speak of a theme, it is an effort of the individual to relate oneself as an identity to a fluid, apparently incoherent universe. The universe was once conceived almost as a vast preserve, landscape for heroes plotted to provide them with appropriate adventures. The rules were known and respected. The adversaries, honorable. The oracles as articulate and as precise as the directives of a six-lane parkway. Errors of weakness or vanity led with measured momentum to the tragedy which resolved everything. Today, the rules are ambiguous. The adversary is concealed in aliases. The oracles broadcast a babble of contradictions. The adventure is no longer reserved for heroes and challengers. The universe itself imposes its challenges upon the meek and the brave indiscriminately. One does not so much act upon such a universe as react to its volatile variety. Struggling to preserve, in the midst of such relentless metamorphosis, the constancy of personal identity. Atland is a film that's kind of hard to describe. Aside from the beautiful cinematography and the editing, it's hard to articulate why I enjoy it so much, and maybe that's the point. It's communicating in a visual language that's beyond words, the language of cinema. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you learned something about Maya Deering. I hope you check out her work. She's awesome. There's also this really great book where I've gotten a lot of this information from. It's a collection of her writings uh, called Essential Deering. Uh, this is all written by her. Her films are out there. Check them out. Check out her work. She's awesome. I would love it if more people discovered her. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. It only takes a few seconds out of your day, but who knows? Something really cool might pop up in your feed one day. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one.